Highway alignment can be designed with ample knowledge on different curves used, both horizontal and vertical. Learn about the different highway curves here in Engineering Surveys. As introduced earlier, there are two general types of highway curves, namely the horizontal curves and vertical curves. Vertical curves are also termed as parabolic curves as they follow the characteristic of parabolas. There are two main types of vertical curves, namely the crest curves or those concave upwards and the sag curves or those concaving downwards. On the other hand, horizontal curves are further classified into three combined curves, circular curves, and transition curves. Broken back curves are combination of curves and tangents. Circular curves are categorized as simple, compound, and reverse curves. Transition curves has cubic parabola, clothoid, cubic spiral, and lemini scale. The two main parts of a highway are the tangents or the straights and the curves. Simple curves are two intersecting tangents which form a curve with a designated radius and central angle. A compound curve has one or more simple curves of different radii. The centers of curvature will be located at a common side of the curves. A reverse curve comprises of two or more simple curves, but the distinction of reverse curves from compound curves is the location of their centers of curvature, which would be at opposite sides of the curves. A broken back curve has a short tangent in between the two simple curves. Computation for this type of curve will still integrate the elements of tangents and the simple curves. Transition curves are the adjusting curves used between simple curves of smaller radius to a wider span of tangents. They are used in short distances as transition from small radius to a bigger gap of tangents. A simple curve is formed when two tangents or straights intersect. The point where the back tangent joins the simple curve is called the point of curve or PC. Some references refer to it as the beginning of curve or BC. The point where the curve ends and meets the forward tangent is called point of tangency or PT. And again, some references use end of curve or EC. Another point to consider is the point of intersection of the two tangents, which is coined as PI or also referred to as the vertex V. At this point, it may be noted that both the radius of the curve and the central angle have already been designed prior to the alignment of the curve. There are six main elements of a simple curve. Let us derive formulas to identify such elements. First off is tangent T. With the radius and central angle already given, we can focus on the triangle formed by PC, PI, and the center of the curve point O. The radius will always be perpendicular to any point of the curve, so we can generate a right triangle with a side as R and the other side taken as T. The angle will be bisected as well. By trigonometric functions, we can say that the tangent of half of delta is tangent T all over R, so by simply cross-multiplying, T is then derived as the radius multiplied by the tangent of half of angle delta. The external distance E is the distance from the apex of the curve to the vertex. 
By using a triangle formed by PI, PC, and point O, we can separate the hypotenuse with the radius R and the external distance E. So to integrate E in the formula, we use cosine of half the delta as R all over the hypotenuse R plus E. Cross multiply the terms to isolate E and factor out the similar variable R, making the equation E is equal to R times 1 all over cosine of half of delta minus 1, which we can also simplify as R times secant of half of delta minus 1. The long chord is the distance taken from point of curve PC and point of tangent CPT. We can derive the formula for LC by using the triangle form from PC and the center of the curve with the line projected from PI. The right triangle also contains half of delta with the sides as R and half of the long chord LC. By taking the sine of half of delta, which is the opposite side, LC all over 2, all of which is divided by R, we can derive the long chord as 2R sine of delta all over 2. The middle ordinate m is the perpendicular distance from the apex of the curve to the long chord. Note that the middle ordinate is actually a part of the radius r. So again, if we use a triangle formed by PC and point O with the long chord, we still have half of delta as one of the angles of the right triangle, and the sides are the radius r and r minus m. Again, take the cosine of half of delta. We have r less m all divided by r. Isolate m by cross multiplying the other terms and arranging the terms, we can factor out r to make the formula m is equal to r times 1 plus cosine of half of delta. Next element is the length of curve L. The formula for L is derived using ratio and proportion where L is to the angle of the sector, as the circumference 2 pi r is to 360 degrees, which is taken from the elements of a circle. By cross-multiplying the terms, we can note that L is equal to delta r times 2 pi all over 360 degrees. And by closer look, one can notice 2 pi all over 360 degrees, which is just the conversion of radians to degrees or vice versa. So we can say L is equal to delta R when using radians as units. The last element is the degree of curve, which is defined as the sharpness or the flatness of a curve. The degree of curve is a way to identify the radius in case R is not given. The two methods of denoting the degree of curve are as follows. We start with arc basis. Through this method, the degree of curve is projected from a curve of length 100 feet or 20 meters. By using ratio and proportion, we can use 100 feet is to the degree of curve as the circumference of the circle is to 360 degrees. So we can determine the radius r in terms of d as 5,729.58 all over d. The same procedure is made for the metric units where we use 20 meters to replace 100 feet and the radius is taken as 1145.916 divided by d. The second method is chord basis which takes the long chord of a degree of curve as 100 feet or 20 meters instead of the curve itself. Since it is possible now to create a triangle, we can work with trigonometry to relate the radius with a degree of curve. That is, the sine of half of D is equal to 50 feet upon R, giving R as 50 divided by sine of D all over 2. Same thing using metric units as 10 meters divided by sine of D all over 2. Mm -hmm.